Today we are going to cover the thesis upload. So what you see here is the key. In case you see any of this information, these letters, these symbols next to your thesis, it's going to give you an idea of what I'm looking for. So what I mean by two thesis has two separate essay topics means that your thesis possibly has two potential points to make and you can break that down and each one within itself is its own essay. Uh, needs clarification. When you see this, this is a reference to how and why. There is a separate screencast on this one, but uh, really when, it, when this, when I'm asking this question, how or why, if you can answer that question, it just breaks down your thesis even further. Uh, SH, start here, means you probably should start your thesis at this point as opposed to the section that you started. And uh, here's the way the grade's gonna look. Just so, so we're aware, None of these grades are going to count. This is for pre-assessment um, points, so that's mainly something that I have to address. And so this grading scale here is not anything that's going to be posted online. It will be online, but you should not have access. It should not count against your grade. It will not be visible. So hopefully, if you do see it, uh, then that means that I forgot to click the item that says do not make this accessible to students because it's really just for my purpose. Anyway, so the grade scale, you'll see a zero um, up to 2.5. Nobody scored a three on this. And uh, here you see a number one. So number one is the equivalent to like a 33, you know, out of 103.3 out of 10, uh, 3 .33 out of one, whatever. Uh, but for the most part, zero is, is not what you want. Um, and then uh, a three is what you want. So this is the rubric for the essay uh, thesis section. And your actual rubric for the essay, if you were to access this file here, it might look a little different because usually when I grade essays, I start with 100 and then I do deductions. So if you notice here, it's one, negative two, and so on. And then here, it's just, you know, out of three. So it's just reference here, uh, some, something to you know, make the point about. So let's take a look at a couple of these items. I tried to black out every name, and I'm just going to read a couple of these items here. So let's take a look at this one, and just so you know, every uh, submitted for each class is, is uploaded here. All right, so um, here we go. Uh, the worldwide competition on technological advancements affected the growth of the auto industry. Okay, so I scored this one at a zero. Worldwide, this should be about the U.S., not the world. When you start writing the worldwide, are you writing about the entire world? Remember, this is a mini essay, so I don't know if you're ever going to be able to sum up even the United States uh, in that particular situation, much less the world. There's just way too much. So you want to break this down, you know, or not even include this. Anyway, let me start again. Worldwide competition on technological advancements, such as SA. So I'm asking here, like, such as. Give me a list. Give me, like, one or two items that your essay is going to be about. Now, if we have three paragraphs, you should probably mention three points. So these advancements right here, that should pretty much be it. If you successfully broke this down into three separate points, you can stop right here. Uh, affecting the growth of the auto industry. I don't know what that even means. Like, what is what are your three examples? So again, like, it's almost like there's two points being made here. Am I supposed to, as a reader, you know, technological advancements, and then uh, or how those advancements affected the growth of the auto industry? Those are two separate essay points. I probably should put a two here because they seem to have two points. So there seems to be a lot of uh, issues with this. No, no clarity. Uh, I, I can't. Might figure out where they're going with that. Let's look at this one with the one. The LA Times bombing was an act of terrorism. And I write here because, you know, add on to this. What are your points? Give me point one, give me point two, or point three. Especially if we're writing a three paragraph essay, then this point should be addressed in paragraph two. This should be addressed in paragraph three. This should be addressed in paragraph four. Keep in mind your first paragraph would be your opening paragraph, and then you would have your closing, and that would give you your fifth paragraph. Uh, but we're doing the mini essay. So with the mini essay, you really only need one clear point. And uh, you can kind of end there. The LA Times buying was an act of terrorism because, and I don't know what the research suggests here, like what is your evidence? Uh, as the two brothers, not specific, like who, we, who exactly are we talking about here? Who planted the bombs uh, with the intent to kill specific civilians. Now, how do you know they had the intent to kill? 
Did they write any manifesto? Did they leave any uh, notation behind about why they were doing what they were doing? Otherwise, this right here is just speculation. Uh, I right here cite the definition. Now, the, def the terrorism essays are a little different because it's asking you to determine whether or not it was an act of terrorism. So this was different. You know, I don't mean cite the definition. I mean to use and apply the definition. You know, here they're writing that it was an act of terrorism because, you know, how do their acts reinforce or act as evidence uh, that terrorism took place using the definition of terrorism? Let's move on to another one. All right, so let's take a look at this one. I scored it a one. I put down two wordy. Margaret Sanger fought for women's rights in the 20s because, um, and I write here, not how. I mean, like, how? You could just say, this is how she fought. Margaret Sanger fought for women's rights in the 1920s by doing this and this thing and this thing. She created the organization Planned Parenthood. Um, she assisted with pamphlet distribution that explained to people how to get abortions. And she published a journal. So those three things would count as evidence. Again, this would be for a, you know, five paragraph essay. We're looking for pretty much one argument, you know, so you can just focus on, you know, what she did for Planned Parenthood. And then your three sources within that paragraph are all about Planned Parenthood. And then you can kind of stop right there. But they go on. She wanted to find the most effective contraceptive. OK, so that's a different issue. I don't necessarily know what you would use for this. I mean, you know, do you have a speech that... You know, she's looking for the most effective contraceptive. I mean, is that where you're going with this? That relieved uh, women from horrible strain of unwanted pregnancy. So now this is a completely separate issue. And make birth control information and contraceptives use universally available. So here we're talking about like three or four different things when they could have just probably eliminated all of this and just focused on this point. And then that's it. So I write here to worry. We're looking at that rubric. Um, you know, if I'm reading this and I have to make a decision about where this is going and I'm lost, I'm probably around here. Thesis is more than one sentence, is very vague or general, and does not cite any specific person, act, law, or event that show evidence of a clearly precise argument. The reader has no understanding of what the essay will argue. And that's kind of what I get with this one here. Let's go to a, another class. So this one here. Now, I scored this one a two out of three. Uh, let's see what, what they have. From the Roaring Twenties to the Great Depression. Okay, that, that's a big jump. You probably can just focus on one, the Twenties or the Depression. But, you know, you, you know maybe they're looking at, at the difference. And that might be possible because they used the word transition. Music style and variety had experienced a transition from lyrics of great economic prosperity to suffering and life of poverty. Okay, so now that I read this, it makes sense. Totally um, okay to link uh, link these two because they're looking at the transition and they're going to pretty much say in the 20s songs were about prosperity and in the depression they were about this and the only conclusion i have here or addition is like such as like what music are we talking about because they do specify style i don't know what exactly that means or the word variety so i just wrote not a bad point like you know i read this and i'm like okay well you know the student definitely is going above and beyond with that particular thesis statement and I'm not going to go through all of these. Um, so I've included every class. So you should be able to look and take a look at my comments. And what I want you to do is read through these and get a sense for kind of what I'm asking you to do here. Uh, let's take a look at this one. Two essays I write. Cards in the 20s costed lower as they were mass produced and introduced the idea of buying on credit. So car mass production is a separate essay within itself. And then buying on credit is a completely separate issue. So I'm going to argue that these are two separate, unrelated essays. And then I don't even know why they included that link here. So I just scored this one a zero. Poetry written by Langston Hughes during the period of the Harlem Renaissance. So they put during the period. This should be a deduction because they didn't specify, you know, the time period. What are we talk about 1922. However. They avoid that deduction because they are telling me specifically the Harlem Renaissance. So that lets me know as a reader of history that that's what they're talking about that time period and I can kind of get ready for the arguments that are going to be made. Was unique. Uh, I don't know about the use of this word unique because it showed the struggle and desperation of Africa. So I know this to be the case with the Harlem Renaissance that uh, artists and, and poets and writers 
they wanted to talk about the struggle African Americans were going through at this particular point. I don't know how you go about, you know, um, supporting this. You know, are you going to give me white authors and then black authors and then I don't know, there were a hundred white authors and then there were two and out of the two, they were only talking about uh, black issues. And then over here, they only spoke about white issues. Like, I, I don't know how you go about supporting this. So what I would say is, you know, you, you probably want to cite Langston Hughes, some of his work, and then only focus on those sections. And you probably can cite direct examples, like some of the, the you know, poetry, but make sure you, you bring up a JSTOR source with that. Uh, let's see, what else? Let's take a genocide essay here. Due to the extensive media coverage on the Armenian genocide, I don't know what makes it extensive, the U.S. is shown to have immense knowledge about the genocide. Okay, so we have knowledge about the genocide. Okay, that could be one thing if you're just going to give me a list. The U.S. knew this item, this item, and this item, and this item about the Armenian genocide, but didn't offer any military intervention. I don't know why any of this forces the United States. At what point do we have to solve all of the world's suffering? Other uh, they did not want to declare war on the East, in the East. So this is a, a strong accusation. You're basically saying that the United States did not want to get involved in the war, even though they knew about the Armenian genocide. But how do you go about supporting that? Do you have a speech from the president where the president is clearly saying this? At this point, this seems to be a lot of speculation. So I don't know how you go about clearly supporting this point. Uh, anybody writing about genocide might want to take a look at the book, uh, Problem from Hell. I think the author's name is Samantha Powers. I don't know why I know that, but whatever. I don't know how I feel now about myself. Uh, Margaret Sanger. All right, so here's, a, I guess, an error on my part with regard to, to the rating. So this zero means that you know I didn't take any points off of this one. Um, you know, smiley face light, you know. Margaret Sanger advocated for women reproductive rights in the 20s by distributing information on contraceptives and founding the American Birth Control League. It's clear, it's precise, it's to the point. I only expect to read examples of the information on contraceptives that she distributed, as well as information talking about the founding of the American Birth Control League. So with this one, I was arguing that, you know, zero deductions. I didn't take away any points on this one. Uh, so that's kind of the error on, on, on my part with that, um, with regard to the way the uh, rubric was set up, you know, where I normally just go for deductions and then I kind of needed this for the, the pretest. Here I write that they contradict the thesis. They did not directly impact his ability to fly. I mean, it clearly did. And that's why I needed to reduce the weight. Um, another one. Margaret Sanger advocated for more I read that one. What am I doing over here? Come on, man. You're reading the same one. Stop reading the same one. Generations get their name from the cultural phenomena that occurred during the time of their birth and childhood. I don't know what that means. You know, I want to know why and how generations get their name. Are, are we talking about writers of the time? Are we talking about, you know, newspaper, um, journalists? Are we talking about historians writing books? Like, How do we come to name those generations? This first essay has nothing to do with, you know, Gen Z did this, baby boomers experienced this, silent generation experienced this. No, I want to know how generations get their names. Where's the debate? There's a lot of debate on this particular topic. Why does it exist? That's what you should be writing about for that particular essay. Let me see. Okay. Um, the Z1 of the 30s was the first freely pro programmable computer. Zero. Zero out of three. I don't know what was the first freely pro... Like, okay, uh, to me that seems factual. Where do you go with this? Now, how and why the Z1 was developed, or if, even if you're getting into the, the difference with regard to programming, computers coming after it, and what makes the Z1 significant, you know, but this is... Uh, you know, uh, I, I don't even know. This just seems to be factual. Uh, so this is scored at a zero out of three, where the other one was just zero deductions. I didn't find anything wrong with that thesis. The other one, that's why I had the smiley face. Abortion in the 20s, though unsafe because of its illegal nature, was a fairly common practice among married middle-class women. So I like that they're locking themselves into this. They're only going to write about that. A fairly common practice. I don't know how you're going to support that. Are you, what, are you going to use data? 
You know, if you are, I would suggest looking up the book When Abortion Was a Crime. I think I have sources for that on my race, class, gender. So go there, go to the gender tab, and then you can kind of look. So looking at these, I see a lot of pick one, which was, here we see an offensive claim. Uh, and so uh, three generation, 100 gap, each classified group, similar starting cutoff date and name proposed by many parties and not one similar. I, I don't even know what this is about. Completely lost me, this uh, thesis. I don't know where they're going with that. I still can't figure that one out. Um, Gay rights. Her, Henry Gerber tried to promote the understanding of tolerance of homosexuality by creating an association called Society for Human Rights. Homosexuality is not a term. Probably want to use the word inversion. He tried to promote the understanding of tolerance of homosexuality by creating. So it's kind of similar to the other one. You know, what exactly are you going to support here? You can break this down. Like, what exactly did he do with this creation? You know, what is this Society for Human Rights? What is their mission statement? You know, those are items that you can add to this to give this more clarity. And so I'm just saying here, add to this, add to, to the Society of Human Rights, you know, add to it. And that's how you go about gaining some additional detail for that. Anyway, I'm done with this one. I'm not going to read every thesis statement. You see comments posted, um, you know, for each one. I did this um, for a prior year as well. So you might want to take a look at the thesis help. Uh, it was pretty much very similar to that, uh, where it's going to give you some thesis statements from a prior year. So I would suggest, you know, read this one. And remember, when you're writing your paper, we have already started with this one thesis. So this is your first, and you should be, based on your research, revising what you have here. If you're not revising what you have, then you're forced to support find the research that supports this particular argument. So you better make sure that your sources are correct. Other last thing I want to mention is that, you know, when you open up the rubric, remember, when you see the yellow, this is first marking period, this is second marking period's rubric, this is third marking period's rubric. Ooh. And then after that, you see some, uh, you know, just additional guidelines. You know, these are things letting you know, like this section, you lost me. You know, you're writing about something, you completely lost me. You're using slang. Um, you know, avoid throughout history or tell me who these people are. So that's it for this particular screencast, um, the first essay uploads for 2021. I can't believe it's 2021. Whatever. I guess life goes on. Things go on. And we're writing. Make sure you cite JSTOR articles. That's it. I have nothing else to say. If you're listening to this, maybe I should sing a song. Sing a song. I'm not going to sing a song. You sing a song. All right, now I'm just speaking nonsense. All right, enjoy.